I'm John Grogan, author of The Longest Trip Home. I was born in 1957 in the once great city of Detroit, uh, back in the days when the American automobile was still king. Uh, but it was only about a year after I was born that my parents decided they want to find a better life for their kids than they had growing up during the Great Depression. And they moved us out of the city to a leafy suburb uh, on the outskirts of Detroit. Our little town was called Orchard Lake. And in that little town, our even smaller neighborhood was Harbor Hills. Yeah, so this is my place. Uh, this is the place I grew up in, 3535 Erie Drive. It really hasn't changed much at all over the years. Here's the Orlando Refuge Rectory where I used to work as an office boy, earning the grand sum of one dollar an hour. Here's the convent where the nuns lived and where when Tommy and I got in a lot of trouble we'd have to come over here and scrub the floors for the nuns as punishment. Here's Our Lady of Refuge School where I uh, went to school from first grade through eighth grade. It looks just about the same as it looked when I was here. Here's what was the church when I was a kid. Uh, it was actually built to be the school gymnasium but until they had enough money to build the real church this serves as a substitute church. Back behind the altar, this was the sacristy where we used to put on our altar uniforms, our, our cassocks and surpluses. And this was also where the wine was kept, where after mass, the altar boys, once Father left the building, the altar boys could take swigs of the sacramental wine. It was right in this room, right here. Right here, this door was the closet where the wine was kept. Yeah, the same door, the same exact door. Yeah, I'm standing where the altar was. Uh, this used to be the church, now it's the gymnasium. Um, the building's exactly the same, cinder block walls, block glass windows. It was built to be a gym, but then they put pews in and made it a church for probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. When I was growing up, it was a church. Pretty basic church, but this, for us, this is where everything happened. First communion, first confession. I gotta show you where I had my first confession. It was back through those wood doors there. And off to the side, there was like a little cloak room. And that's where the door locked and Father had to let me in. So he knew who I was. And I knew I couldn't tell the truth now because Father knew me and he knew my parents. And I had some sins that I just thought I couldn't tell anybody. Harbor Hills was built on a kind of a tier caste system. The people who lived right on the water had the nicest houses and the best views. But all of us got to have a little bit of the beach life because there was the outlaw, and that's what's behind me. The outlaw was a kind of park that the neighborhood had, a couple of acres of just open land and with access to the beach. So all of us could come down here and lie in the sun and hang out. And as you can imagine, all the kids in the neighborhood were down here pretty much nonstop from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And in the outlaw was the lagoon also known as the Boat Basin. We all called it the Lagoon, though. It was just a little man-made uh, place where people could have a dock and a boat. So everyone in the neighborhood got half of a dock. And this was the best part of the outlaw. This was the beach. We were down here all the time, all summer long. This is not only where we swam and goofed around, it's where we had our first cigarettes, our first kisses, all those sort of rites of passage for kids and teenagers. Uh, those evergreens behind me were about up to my waist when I was a kid here. They've grown just a little bit in the years that have followed. And straight across Cass Lake, uh, you can barely see it right from here, but that's Dodge Park over there. Dodge Park was off limits to me because of all the drug use going on there. But I disobeyed and one day I took the sailboat and I sailed across the water straight over there. And I landed and I ended up in the middle of a drug bust and of course found myself on the front page of the local paper, the Pontiac Press, the next morning. And this behind me was Mr. Pemberton's house. Mr. Pemberton was the neighborhood grump, the guy who took it upon himself to keep an eye on all the kids in the neighborhood and watch the teenagers. And this was the site of the great stolen firework caper. Uh, we set it in the grass just behind me here, and uh, we thought it'd be a great joke to, to set it off. Uh, we weren't quite aware of just exactly how powerful those things are. 
Uh, this is actually the place where, it's a little ironic, my brother Tim and I would skip Mass at Our Lady of Refuge and come across to the Catholic Seminary to hang out for the hour that Mass went on. But I'll show you why. I'm going to turn the camera around. Tim and I would sit here uh, on the green grass at St. Mary's looking out over the, the blue waters of Orchard Lake. And uh, this is what we call the Church of Tim and John. Lots of things have changed in my hometown, and I have too. We lost Dad just before Christmas five years ago. I miss him so much. Mom is 93 and frail and forgetful, but still has her good cheer. Even though I see her whenever I can, I miss her too, and the way it used to be. The family I had growing up is all but a memory now. Children move away, we start our own families. But it's the trip we make home again that is so important. Family can be crazy and infuriating, but it's also what matters most. Sometimes it takes a lifetime to figure that out.